So you've been welcomed into your new home in Jannah by Allah, by the angels, and by all of the creation in paradise. What does that new home look like? Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu said that we said to the Prophet sallallahu Ya Rasulullah, when we see you, our hearts are so soft and we feel like we're people of the hereafter. But then once we leave from you, we get involved in this dunya and we get busy with our spouses and our children and we feel like our hearts are hardened a bit. And the Prophet ﷺ said, if you were to remain on the same condition on which you are with me, the angels would shake hands with you and visit you in your homes. And if you were to not commit sins, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would replace you with others who will commit sins and then they'll seek his forgiveness and he can forgive them. Meaning you're not supposed to be perfect yet. That's in Jannah and the angels would greet you in every direction like they would in Jannah if you were to be perfect in this life. But keep on striving and keep on going and wait for that moment where you enter into Jannah and actually live that reality. And on that note, the companions, they responded to the Prophet ﷺ and they said, Ya Rasulullah, tell us about Jannah and its structure. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Labinatun min fidla, wa labinatun min dhahab, wa milatu hal miskul athfar, wa hasba hal lu'lu wal yaqut, wa turbatu hal za'faran. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that its structure is one brick of gold, one brick of silver, its plaster is musk. Its gravel is pearl and ruby, and its soil is saffron. So again, these palaces are from bricks of gold and silver. The plaster is musk, the gravel is pearl and ruby, and the soil is saffron. The Prophet said, Man dakhalaha yan'amu wa la yay'as wa yakhlud wa la yamut la tabla thiyabuhum wa la tafna shababuhum. He said, whoever enters into it will be pleased and will not grieve will enjoy eternity without death. Their clothes will never fade and their youth will never expire. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he gives you the scene. He says, you enter into a lofty house and the distance between the ground and the roof is a hundred cubits. So it's super high ceilings. And he said, it's built on a waterfall of pearl and ruby, having red, green, and yellow paths. And none of the pathways in Jannah are the same as the other. So there's differentiation throughout. And he said the water flows throughout the homes. And this is the case of all of the homes of Jannah that you have water flowing throughout. And beautiful mansions in gardens of everlasting bliss. SubhanAllah, notice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He says mansions. So it's not just one mansion, mansions. And he said, they're beautiful and they're pure and they don't require any maintenance. You know, sometimes people worry that a big house means big trouble. And by the way, there's no kitchen in Jannah because what would you need a kitchen for anyway? You don't need to wash dishes. You don't need to vacuum. You don't need to clean anything of these houses. That's all taken care of. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it's not just houses, but it is all sorts of property. So Allah mentions buyut, homes. Allah mentions qusur, which are palaces. Allah mentions ghuraf, these special apartments, these special rooms. And Allah mentions khiyam, the guest houses and the pavilions that reside on the outside of these gardens. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa ra'ayta thamma ra'ayta na'iman wa mulkan kabira. Everywhere you look around, you just see indescribable blessing. And that's reflected on your face. Ta'rifu fi wujuhihim nadrat al-na'im. You look at the faces of the believers and you just see that they're so happy, that they're full of so much bliss as they look around. Wa mulkan kabira, and a vast kingdom. It's not just one construction, but all sorts of constructions that belong to you. So what do these look like? Where the Prophet ﷺ, you know, talks about this particular palace that he says he saw that belonged to Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said it was a palace of gold. And Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah, he comments on this because again, there are degrees in Jannah. He says a palace of pure gold is only for a prophet, a siddiq, a martyr, or a just ruler. And these are of course, very similar to the same categories that are shaded under Allah's throne. Because remember the virtues of the day of judgment carry over into Jannah now. So you have a rank of palaces of pure gold. And in Jannah carrots, of course, not in worldly carrots. 
and that belongs to the highest level of its occupants. And then Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah said, there are palaces in paradise of gold, and then you have some of silver, and then some of pearl, and some of ruby, and some of crystal. And Ubaid ibn Umayr radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, the lowest person in paradise will have a home of one single pearl with its multiple rooms and gates. So the highest level is actually, funny enough, the word in the Quran that sometimes gets translated as apartments. But it's not what it may seem to people because apartments can seem lower in this dunya. In Jannah, they're actually describing something higher, something that belongs only to the sabiqun, to the forerunners. And that's the word ghuraf, so the rooms or the apartments. And these are what the Prophet ﷺ described as constructions that are made of crystal and they sparkle in the horizon of Jannah. So they're like these glimmering chalets in the sky that look like stars to the rest of Jannah. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the rest of the people of Jannah, they see the residents of the Ghuraf as you would see a long gone star in the horizon. And Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala describes the qualities of these Ghuraf and the people that get them. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says, That for those who are conscious of their Lord, they have these rooms and above those rooms, there are other rooms and they have been built with rivers flowing beneath them. Wa'dallah, and this is the promise of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, And He does not fail in His promise. So first, Taqwa. The first quality here is Taqwa, people that are God conscious. Alladina Taqwa. And people of Taqwa gave up the sins that spoke to their lower selves. So now they get the higher rewards of the Ghuraf. Then Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala says, إِلَّا مَنْ آمَنَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا فَأُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمْ جَزَاءُ الْلِعْفِ بِمَا عَمِلُوا وَهُمْ فِي الْغُرُفَاتِ آمِنُونَ Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala says that it's those who do good deeds, those who believe and do good deeds, that have multiplied rewards with us for all that they did, and they live in safety in these ghuraf, these lofty dwellings of paradise. So basically now you have those who had lofty deeds, and now they have lofty dwellings with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And finally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, particularly after mentioning Ibadur Rahman, the servants of the most merciful who tread the earth lightly. And when they are harshly addressed, they respond with salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on to mention all of these lofty qualities, the qualities of the people who are most beloved to Him. And they're not easy qualities to maintain. And Allah says after the description of Ibad al-Rahman, the servants of the Most Merciful, أُولَٰئِكَ يُجْزَوْنَ الْغُرْفَةَ بِمَا صَبَرُوا They will be rewarded with high apartments because of their patience. For their patience of harsh addresses from the ignorant towards them, when they responded with salam, and now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is responding to them with salam. And the way that they would forego certain things in this world, and now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving them dwellings that they could not have imagined in the hereafter. So these dwellings have to do with taking the higher road. And so now they occupy the higher room. And that's why Asi alayhi salam gets this high dwelling عندك, with you because she bore the abuse, not just of someone that was insulting, she bore the abuse of Fir'aun and she took the high road. So now she has a room in the highest rank with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also the Prophet sallallahu mentioned homes for those who leave off arguments, even when they're right. So they don't engage in lower manners and they leave off foolish joking. So they don't engage in lowliness with their humor to impress anybody. And they have good character. So they have high standards that other people don't necessarily abide by. And Rasulullah said, there are rooms in paradise, the inner of which is seen from the outside and the outside seen from the inside. And you might be thinking, well, where's the privacy? Well, you don't have to worry about privacy because of the expanse and the elevation. No one can see you in these rooms. So these transparent homes. And we said, Ya Rasulullah, who are these for? And he said, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala has prepared them for the one who feeds the poor and then who fasts consistently and who prays at night when other people are sleeping. So you can have multiple homes in paradise, but you have to commit to multiple deeds and strive to have golden qualities 
befitting of the golden palaces that we so desire. Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'innah irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyah فَدَخُلِي فِي عِبَادِي وَدَخُلِي جَنَّتِي